Welcome to Amp Books number eight, everyone. And this book is Awakening Spirits by Tom Brown. And I was actually really surprised when I read this book because I didn't expect to have that much actionable takeaway wisdom from a book. It's actually a pretty short book. It's small. And it's from a Native American trained tracker who has a lot of wisdom surrounding meditation and just spirituality in general. He's actually, his method is what I adopted my own guided meditation method, which you can find available for free on aubreymarcus.com. It's called the Sacred Silence Meditation, and he talks about that in this book. That's where I got it from. And it's an incredibly effective tool to use for guided meditation. Another form of meditation that I learned was also his wide peripheral gaze, which I wrote about in Own the Day. The opportunity to expand your eyes, to look at everything and nothing at the same time so that your brain gets actually overloaded with all of the pixels of information and everything quiets down and everything stills itself. Also a great way if you're trying to track animals to notice different things without focusing and looking at things because the mind is so good and useful at focusing at one thing. We're always looking at something when really to see everything, you have to look at nothing and everything at the same time. It's something that martial artists use, it's something that trackers use, and something that you can use for meditation. So those deep breaths, looking through the corners, tops, bottoms, all parts of your eyes, seeing everything. I see Ryan Giles fucking around with a little can. I see somebody coming to the door. I see Christian chuckling. I see Sky looking at the door. I see all of the people in the room right now without having to look at any one of them. And that is the tools that you learn from someone who spent their life dedicated to the practice of nature, meditation, spirituality, and learning from some of the greats that have walked this land long before us. So when I jump into the book, we're going to talk about the hero of the book, a man named Torrance, who I believe is based on Tom himself, and he's going to be talking to his grandfather, and they come to a really important revelation. Now for the reading from Tom Brown Jr.'s book, Awakening Spirits. And again, the main character, Torrance, is sitting with his grandfather, pondering one of the challenging issues they've been working on. Grandfather said, we were all born to live the duality. However, in most people, the logical mind becomes dominant, for it is trained the most. In my people, it is important to train both minds. A child becomes equally versed in the wisdom of the physical mind and the wisdom of the spiritual mind. It is only when the physical mind becomes overtrained, as it is with most people, that it becomes dominant. Yet there is still part of the physical mind that remains connected to the spiritual mind. It is that part of the physical mind that guides many to seek the wisdom of the spirit. Thus the solution must lie within the friendly part of the logical mind. This part must contain the internal hair that triggers the logical mind to quiet. And thus allows the spiritual mind to come forth. What then could be the internal hair? And the hair, just so you know, was part of a fable that was told in which one piece of hair was the thing that kind of unlocked someone's ability to tap into their spiritual mind. Grandfather and Torrance discussed this possibility well into the night, barely taking time for any breaks or even to eat. They were so engrossed and enthusiastic over the possibilities that they became too excited to do anything else. They both told stories about people they knew who were once so wrapped up in the logical, physical mind that they would never be inclined to seek the wisdom of the spirit. Yet despite the odds being against them, one day they would turn around and begin the journey along their spiritual path. So then there must be something in that part of the physical mind that would ultimately direct us to seek spiritual ways. It is that same part of a person's mind that wonders if there is more to life than just the flesh. Both exhausted from the searching process, Grandfather and Torrance decided to get some sleep and begin again in the morning. The sleep would be a way of clarifying what they had discussed and learned. Grandfather fell into a state somewhere between sleep and awake. 
His dream mind wandered over all the journeys of the quest for purity he had undertaken in the past several moons. Coyote Thunder had been right. It was in the span of just one moon that the greatest enlightenment had come to Grandfather. What followed now was a reinforcement of what he learned and the chance to discover the truth of the last remaining details. It seemed that all of the spiritual quests in his life had led him right to this point in time and place. Now all he needed were the final answers so he could put it all to use. It was not long before Grandfather fell into a deep and much-needed sleep. However, several times during the night, he awakened without cause, sat up, and looked around, then just as suddenly fell back to sleep. Each time he awoke, he felt as if he was reaching out for something, but once he was fully awake, it was no longer there. It was during the last abrupt awakening that Grandfather saw the old woman again. She smiled at him warmly and said, So you have come this far, yet you still have one last quest to work through. Once you arrive at that truth, your spiritual path in life will change, and you will then seek to gather all manner of spiritual knowledge, now in a pure way. You wonder what the bridge must be between the logical conscious and the spiritual mind. As you have decided, there is a simple and pure answer. That answer will come to you once you have discovered the secret. But what is the secret? Grandfather asked. It is simple, so simple, for you have known it all along said the old woman. Once I reveal the secret unto you, I will leave you until the day you pass to the spirit world. My work with you will be done. What you seek is simply choice. And with that, she was gone. So that was one of the coolest sections of that book that I read because there's so many different ideas that we can all have about how to tap into what some people call your soul, what they were calling your spiritual mind, tap into that knowing, tap into that higher self, tap into that greater version of yourself. And then there's all these techniques and all these styles and all these things that you can do to do that. And we think that we need to do that. And that's not that those things aren't helpful. But what they're saying is, is that the overriding factor, the thing that you need to do is just choose. Just choose to identify with the spiritual mind. Now, sometimes that may be easier said than done. Sometimes it's like, well, choose to get that song out of your head. Well, you try and you just can't get it out of your head. You just can't do that. And that's where those techniques like the meditation techniques or floating or plant medicine or all these other techniques are helpful. But really, choice can carry you so much farther than you would think. Like you can choose to use the wide peripheral gaze or you can choose to just let it all go choose to be present why don't you try it right now as you listen to this take a deep breath with me and choose to be fully fully present <sighs> choice choice we have these choices all the time and everybody around us is going to try and deny our superpower, which is choice. They're going to say, oh, you're broken. You need this solution. And this solution costs money. Go to your doctor. Go to your this. Go to your that. Go to your that. Get all of these things to fix all of these problems that you have. When really, a lot of the time, they're just denying our ability to choose. Choose what we want and choose what we don't want. And it doesn't mean it's easy. It doesn't mean that if you're addicted to cigarettes, you can easily choose not to smoke cigarettes 
but to remind people that you do have a choice, that you do control your hand that would reach into your wallet and buy that, and the hand that flicks the lighter on, and the other hand that holds the cigarette, and the hand that puts it to your mouth, and the breath that breathes it in. Like, are you not in control of that? So reminding people of the power that we all have, the sovereignty that we all have, I think is important. And again, yeah, I get it. It's not easy. The mind is a beast. And the more that you train that logical mind and the more that you allow that subconscious mind to run amok and control the starship of our entire humanity, well, the harder it's maybe going to be. But the more you can wrangle that choice, it's why I like talking about mental override, which is that ultimate force of choice, right? It's the choice to turn the shower nozzle cold. It's the choice to go in the cold plunge or to go in the hot sauna or to go push yourself in that workout or to choose the right food or to eat that half of a chocolate cake and throw the rest away. It's the ability to choose at any given point. And that choice extends to presence, to tapping into your spiritual mind. And the techniques are helpful, but really, initially, it all starts with choice. That is our superpower. And don't let anybody, don't let anybody tell you that that's not your superpower, because it is. It's your birthright choice. You know, Viktor Frankl was famous for saying that that is the one thing that we will always have the choice over the way that we think about anything external that's happening in this world. The way we think about it is always our choice. And he came up with that from being in a concentration camp, right? In some of the most difficult situations. And he called it the last of the human freedoms. A choice. His choice about how to feel about this horrible reality that he was facing. Like, how we feel about anything, how we feel about something in a relationship, how we feel about something in our life, how we feel about anything, so much more agency we have than we give ourselves credit. And a lot of people, again, are going to say that we don't have it, but we do, and you do. So remember that. Take that piece of wisdom from Awakening Spirits. And if you want, definitely check out the Sacred Silence version of the meditation that I offer on the website at aubreymarcus.com you can just search for guided meditation you'll find it and check out the book um you know it's uh been around for a little while but it contains a lot of great wisdom and a lot of great actionable tools that you can use and bring into your life to help accelerate the choices that you make towards your goals so thanks so much for tuning in to amp books number eight and i'll see you guys next week